Good morning, New Bern. This is your captain speaking. We've begun our final approach into In the Know, Craven Community College's hottest new little podcast where you learn about all the things in the know over at Craven Community College. But I want to introduce our guest today. So we have Dr. Dan Friedlander. Did I say it right? You did. Good I morning, practiced Dan. it like six times. Yeah. <laughs> he is our physical therapist assistant program coordinator and faculty member, correct? True. I think it's yes, harder, I get, harder to say I get, I'm name. lucky and I get the dual role. So <laughs> it's just not a coordinator position. It's a full-time faculty position as well. well that's so. awesome. Well, thank you for joining yes. us. We're excited to have you. Well, thank you so much for having us. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, anytime I can really talk about PT and kind of what we do in our program, um, I, I will always take it. So I appreciate you having me on. Well, good, good. Yeah, if you just wanted like to kind of stop, start and give us like an overview of what that physical therapist assistant program is at Craven. And- yeah, so um, if yeah, so the physical therapist assistant program at Craven, um, it's been around since 2011. 2011, we uh, admitted our first student. And it has kind of morphed into a really solid program where we are, we are creating clinicians for the community. Um, and that's one of the great things about being in my position is that I was a clinician out in the community first. So I was the CI. I was the person who was instructing students. I was the person who was treating patients. Now in this role, now I get to kind of have a broader impact on my community. And that's been really exciting to see. Um, we just sent our students out for their first clinicals yesterday. Okay. Um, and we have a lot of our alumni taking students. So. That is one thing that just kind of it kind of tickles me on the inside because it's so it's so awesome to see students that you were invested in that you put all your time and effort in um, and all your energy really. Um, if any of you have been an instructor, you know the amount of energy that goes into uh, creating lesson plans and creating out learning opportunities for our students and seeing them now becoming the clinical instructor role and being successful and our students coming back and saying, oh, I had this student or I had this person who was an alumni. They were awesome. Like it just, it kind of brings it full circle. So um, in general, I kind of answered that haphazardly, but in general, what a PTA is, a PTA is an assistant to the physical therapist. So the physical therapist, when you, if you have a musculoskeletal condition or if you have a neurological condition or um, if you're deconditioned or if you have pain, tingling, Really, anything that keeps you from doing your daily functions, um, you can go see to a physical therapist or physical therapy clinic. You'll get evaluated by a physical therapist who is usually, especially nowadays, doctorate trained. So um, I think starting in 2000, don't quote me, late 2000s, it became a doctorate degree. So um, I graduated in 2012 from the University of Kentucky. I got my doctorate degree um, in so I am a physical therapist, so I do the evaluations. And then uh, after evaluations, the physical therapist can treat the patient or they kind of, or they can work in a team with a physical therapist assistant. And the physical therapist assistant will decide what treatments to do and kind of where, where to progress this patient, where to kind of lay back on it. So um, it's a very complex position. It has a lot of autonomy. So it's one of the more specialized associate's degrees that we have, um, especially in the healthcare world, that has as much autonomy as it does. So it's a very broad profession. You can take it really anywhere you want to go. If you're more sports-minded in orthopedics, you can go to an outpatient orthopedic clinic. Um, If you're more geared towards pediatrics, you can, by all means, go work with the kiddos. Um, if you like old people, I mean, like that sounds, that's a very broad term. Um, I mean, our geriatric population, our geriatric population. <laughs> right? Because uh, I kind of fall in that old people category. No, you don't. <laughs> no, no, mid, mid, what? Never mind. Uh, yeah, be careful. <laughs> I have full faith that you are not part of our geriatric population. No, you said old. <laughs> um, so if you want to work with those individuals, you can go work in the skilled nursing facilities and have fun that way. Or you can go work in the hospital at acute care, or you can work in inpatient rehab, or you can kind of do your own thing. So that's one of the really cool things is that as a PTA, you can own your own practice, which again is one of the kind of strange things about a, an associate's degree in the health field. I mean, you can't, there's not a lot of other associate degrees in the health field that you can own your own practice and be a successful person. One of my one of my really good good friends and uh, one of our alumni from 2016, I believe, he owns his own practice. So he goes out to the he's kind of a mobile practice. He goes out to the nursing homes that don't have in home therapy, and he provides 
his yeah. company provides yeah. therapy to to individuals that are residing in those in those places. So it's just a very complex, a very broad, a very enjoyable mm-hmm. um, profession that we get to be a part of. But to get to that point, like your friend who's got the uh, the business. Is the PTA program, the associate program, can they then transfer to a four-year program? Well, sort of. So uh, mm-hmm. all of the general education credits that are part mm-hmm. of our pro- plan of study, those will all transfer mm-hmm. to our four-year schools, but our PTA or our core courses, they do not transfer to a four-year school. Okay. Um, so in order for a PTA to make the jump to a physical therapist, they would need to go and usually complete a bachelor's degree and then... Um, apply to a doctor a grad school, grad a physical school. therapy grad school, and get accepted that way. Okay. So mm-hmm. if students are really, um, <clears throat> really, uh, that's kind of their end goal is to be a doctor of physical therapy, but they want to they want to start with our program and kind of, hey, let me, you know, let me not invest seven years and hundreds of thousands of dollars in education like I did. Yeah. Uh, let me not do that up front. Let me go and get my associates. Let me make sure I like it. Let me develop a passion for the profession so that way I can I know what I'm getting into and I can make really, really good money as I'm getting my bachelor's or as I'm going into grad school. Or right. if they just like that, they don't want to go in and like run a business. What I see is they can go into this profession <laughs> with very little or no debt following it. Exactly. And yes. walk into a very lucrative position. Absolutely. And have a great career. Yes. And there and I don't mean to, to portray that, but we have physical therapist assistants are some of the most passionate healthcare providers that you'll ever have. Um, when I what got me interested in the profession was when I was in high school, I blew out my ACL, had to have reconstructive surgery, and then I was in physical therapy for three months. Every part of that journey, I loved. I was, I had the best time. <laughs> I blew my ACL no, and I loved it. No, I'm not. In, in it but sounds, just like seeing how the yeah. process worked, the mechanics of it. Exactly. Because I like yeah. pain. Exactly. I was athletic. I was really, I took an anatomy and physiology honors class in high school that previous year. I was into like the, how the body worked. And it just kind of, you talk about divine intervention. I think it just really happened for a reason. Um and so I, I fell into it, and I loved it. I, I saw my knee get better every day. I saw my leg get stronger every day. I was making functional gains every time. And then my primary clinician that I worked with was a PTA. So she was caring. She was progressive. She had awesome hands-on skills. She progressed exercises appropriately. And we just had a great report. And that is kind of what slingshotted me into the profession. So, yeah, I mean, we have some of, I don't know, physical therapist assistants are some of the most passionate healthcare providers that you can get with. And one of the other things that we love about the profession is that we really get to connect with people. Yeah. Um, you'll find that physical therapists and physical therapist assistants are some of the most empathetic people in the healthcare world because we do. We get to spend 45 minutes to an hour with every patient. Um, so we really get to have a conversation. We get to know what their kids or their grandkids are like. We get to know what their dog's yep. name is, what their hobbies are, because we're trying to get them back to those functions. Mm-hmm. Um, and often you see them several times a week. Yes. Usually it's about two or three times a week in the outpatient setting. In the acute care, we see them every day, every other day. Inpatient rehab, we see them three times a day. Skilled nursing facilities, up to three times a day too. So yeah, so they see we see our patients so so much. It's not just a, a 15 minute uh, evaluation or a 15 minute data collection or or what have you from from maybe some of our other colleagues. Then you were talking about how uh, how your students are always seem to enjoy what they're doing. And they're empathetic. Every time I go by your class, it seems like they're always in there just having fun. <laughs> yes. Do you find that? Uh, Talking a little bit about your journey as well, coming through and being athletic, do you find that the predisposition for a lot of your students are those who were interested in athletics while they were in high school or, or middle school? or Kind or, of, sort of. Yeah. Um, I think we get a good blend of the more extroverted, more athletic mm-hmm. type of individuals who that's their experience. They had an injury. They sprained their ankle. They hurt their elbow. They hurt their shoulder. And they went to physical therapy, had a great time, and said, hey, I want to do this forever. We also have the more introverted people who – really like anatomy and physiology and really like kind of neuroscience and they want to interact with people, they they come on board too and there's places for everyone. Mm-hmm. So they those who are more uh, introverted or not as athletic, they may not be in the outpatient world. They may enjoy their time with the geriatric population. Mm-hmm. They may enjoy their time with the pediatric population. They may enjoy their time 
and acute care. So like I said before, it is such a broad profession and there's so many different avenues for people to take. Um, there's just, it's just, there's something for everyone. Yeah. So it's, and like, and to kind of touch on what you said, we have fun. I mean, like yeah. that's one, that's a, that's a reflection that we get all the time because we're a loud bunch in the classroom. Yep. I feel bad for <laughs> I, I We'd feel, fit right in, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think y'all would. Come yeah. see me. Um, we have nursing faculty that kind of line one of our lab rooms. And that's kind of their all. They always pop their head around like, what are you guys doing that you're having so much fun? Yeah. Um, and I mean, and we'll show you guys in a little bit. But I mean, I like to say that I, we play with our patients. We play for mm -hmm. a living, especially if you're in pediatrics. Of course, you're going to. You're gonna play. Yeah. You're not. You're not really evaluating so much, but you're more or less playing with your pediatric patients to get them to do what you want to do. Um, but even with adult population, that's what we do. We play. We exercise. We get patients up. We get patients moving. Yeah. We're decreasing pain. We're getting them moving. We're printing their mechanics. I mean, it's it's just. I don't know. I'm very passionate about it, but it's just something that we do. We play. And with me as the instructor, I don't like to lecture. Yeah. I like to get students up and moving because that's when we learn best. Mm -hmm. I think like 80% of the population are more kinesthetic learners. Mm -hmm. And so if we can, if I don't talk to you just one-on-one, -on -one, I want to get up and move. I want I want you guys to experience what movement, what what joints are doing and all that kind of stuff. So, Well, speaking of which, you've, you brought props and yes. toys. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we can play always, with. In the medical always, field, they're always. props and toys. Props and toys. <laughs> that's, a, that's how I see them. Yes. Um, but before we talk about that, we yes. do have our applications, yes, our opening for our fall of 2021 cohort. That mm -hmm. uh, that application is starting in February 1st of 2021. So when we come back from holiday break, we have about a month, and then we start taking applications. That application is open until the end of April. So it's about a three-month window that students can apply. And um, we have an application worksheet on our website, on the Craven website, if you mm -hmm. Go to the Craven website, search physical therapist assistant program, and you come to our homepage, you'll see a couple different things. You'll see a program of study. So I encourage people to take a look at that and understand what's a gen ed course and what's a PTA core course. Students can take, students, any student at the college can take the general education courses, so like the math, the English, the communications. You have to be accepted to the program to take the PTA specific courses, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, on that on the website, you'll also see an application worksheet, and it will have the application minimum requirements. So those are things that students have to have in order to be eligible for admission into the program. So those are on there. Um, and then it also has on the back side of that worksheet, it has kind of how we assign points. Mm -hmm. So it is a very competitive, mm -hmm. as you yep. can see, I'm excited. Yeah. Lots of people want to do it. Um, so we have to have, we have a competitive application process. It's based on a point system. Um, we usually get 70, 80, 90 applicants for a given year, and we wow. accept 22. Oh, wow. So it can get pretty competitive. Um, and so the way that students acquire points is on the T's test. So the T's test is like your GRE or like your ACT. It's a test like that. I always encourage students to prepare for it. Don't go into it cold. Yeah. You never <laughs> want to go into a test cold. Um, so based on your scores from that, we have minimums that are listed. But based on those scores, they get them points. Um, they get multiplied by a percentage and then they get points. The other main way that students acquire points on the application is having those general education courses that we all, that I just talked about, having those completed. Mm -hmm. So usually our students who are in the top 22 of when it's all said and done have a majority of those gen eds completed. Okay. Um, and that does kind of two things. Number one, it gets them in the door, gets them applied or gets them accepted. Number two, it makes their life while in the program a lot more manageable. Um, as you just heard me talk about the complexities and the broadness and, and how difficult the program is, we have a very difficult curriculum. So I don't want to scare people away from it, <laughs> but if you are wanting to be a part of the profession, it's a very difficult profession to get into. There's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that we blow through in, in, a, uh, in one and a half years, in five semesters. Yeah. Oh, wow. So the more of the gen ed you can have out of the way, the more you can concentrate on the core classes and the better, you'll, the better you tend to be. Usually students who have um, one or two gen eds that, a semester that they need to get out of the way, they usually kind of have a little bit more difficult time because they, they have to spread the wealth. Yeah. Okay. okay. But, I understand you also have a club. 
Uh, we do have yeah. a PTA Tell club. Tell us about your club. Yes, yeah, so our student-run PTA club, I'm the advisor of it, so I try to, I kind of be trying to be laissez-faire um, with the goals of improving community awareness, improving community interaction, um, and improving campus interaction. So those are kind of the main goals. The last couple of years, we've held fundraisers. Two years ago, we raised money for Special Olympics of Craven County. Last year, the students really found um, an interest with R.A.J. Howe's house down in Riverbend. Okay. Um, is a wonderful cause. It's a uh, permanent home for p uh, kids and adults with developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a permanent residence facility. And we usually take students there in the spring semester. Yeah, no, fall semester, I take that back, in the fall semester. Um, and that typical, that year, the students had a profound effect and they raised money for them and raised money for supplies. This year, our students ra raised money, which was incredibly impressive because yeah. of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, they've kind of, because we came back in August, they kind of brought everything together um, and they raised over a thousand dollars for Newburn and Jacksonville's Coastal Women's Shelter. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so they have done an amazing job. Um, I am so proud of our students in the PTA club because they just, they take the reins and they run full, full head steam with it. Uh, and they uh, have, and they have a fundraiser this Saturday they too. They do, yes. yes. So they have a, uh, a fundraiser at Chipotle on November 21st on Saturday from, what's the time? I think it's four to six. It's four to eight. Four to eight. Yes, and the and Chipotle on MLK. Yes, the Chipotle here in Newburn. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to say that you wanna support the PTA club at the checkout. It's not one of the things that they're gonna ask you about. It's going to be, you need to verbalize it. You don't need to give them a flyer, you just need mm -hmm. to verbalize, hey, I wanna support the PTA club. Um, hey, Charles, can you get and this? And then hopefully it. um yeah, so, we'll get... So we've already got the link to the PTA program Perfect. in the comments. Perfect. And then we'll get a photo of that in the comments as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Thank you all <laughs> yeah. for allowing me to plug that a yes. little bit. <laughs> absolutely. All right. So we're kind of running a little bit short on time. So let me get Megan up on the yeah. treatment table. Megan's on the table. Megan. Megan. I'll do a little bit of some examples of what our students will do to patients who have maybe some cervical pain, Where's maybe you some. Uh, I want you all with your head down this way for me. Um, belly first. On your back. On oh your back. God. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Can you get up there without oh, hurting ourselves? Oh, be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making sure here. So Megan has <laughs> good shots, Charles. <laughs> Megan has the, uh, has confided in me that she's having headaches, she's having numbness and tingling down her hands. So uh, head down. Yes, please go ahead and lay down. Oop, am I gonna get my kit? I think so. Okay. <laughs> All right. This has so, never happened in this. <laughs> <laughs> He said, it, <laughs> he said this has never happened in a studio. Yes, first. Okay, so usually kind of the muscles, the joints in the neck can get really stiff. And Megan does a lot of office work, bless her heart. So she's going to have those rounded shoulders pretty good. Oh, um, and so her, her chest is going to get really tight. There's what's called the thoracic outlet that can close and it can pinch kind of some of the nerves going down. So we're just going to start with some basic, just light. Go ahead and relax. Just kind of working on some of the smaller muscles up at the top. She won't. Yeah. <laughs> no. I am relaxed. Come on, you got to relax, Megan. Now, when you do this with your students, do you like have like do you they like do this stuff on each other? Like, yeah. how does that work? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we have a big lab space. Mm -hmm. We have probably about what, Craig, 1,500 square feet of lab space. That sounds about right. Yeah. Something like that. Um, we have six high-low tables and six normal treatment tables, and our students can all work on each other in there. So we, okay. we do a lot of hands-on instruction. If you look at our plan of our study on our website, if those who are listening, if they look at it, they'll see what's called lab hours and lab lecture hours. Yeah. So for every class in our program except for two, we have a substantial lab component. Okay. So we are, we spend, as Craig mentioned before, we spend a lot of time in lab. Mm -hmm. We do so much hands-on skills. And that's another thing um, that I have found that's a lot different than some of our other health colleagues, is that a lot of our interventions, we do with our hands. Mm -hmm. um, we do with our hands and we do with our knowledge of, the, of how the body moves. Is that feeling okay, Megan? It just feels like you're pulling a rubber band. Yeah. <laughs> very, very tight rubber band. Uh -huh. So Megan's, woo, girl. That is hey now. so tight. <laughs> Come see me. I'm not, I have, my students are off on clinicals. Come see me. 
Do you have sometimes uh, people from the community come in as uh, people, that, or sometimes, is it always students working uh, on each it's, other? It's pretty challenging because we are so busy. Yeah. And we have students in the classroom. We do, uh, we're rocking and rolling. So it's kind of difficult in our curriculum to really take a pause. Whoop. I think Charles is trying to mic you up a little bit. <laughs> There we go. Don't mic me up. <laughs> you might hear popping. So it's kind of difficult to really take a pause and sure. get um, and get a patient in, see what's wrong, and then have students kind of feel it. That's more so what our clinical education portion of the curriculum is. Mm -hmm. We are lucky that we get our students get 16 weeks of full time, 40 hours a week clinicals. Um, some of our other colleagues have their clinicals kind of intermixed within their programs. Sorry, all the hairspray. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so they, it's they don't, tight too. <laughs> so they do more clinicals throughout their curriculum. We have found that we want our, our, um, our clinicals at the end. So that way our students can be more immersive in it. And we used to do it more integrated like our other colleagues. Um, but since we've gone to this format, our students and our CIs really tend to like it. Okay. Yeah. So there's some cervical work. I could spend an hour on Megan. <laughs> now that I get my hands on her and I can like, Ow. I know. <laughs> you know how we talked about uh, massages here yeah. earlier and, yeah. now, and taking care? Hearing Megan say ow, while I, while I want you to make her do it again, I, I won't <laughs> ask you to. Uh, but when you were talking before about having fun in the class, like I would mm -hmm. imagine you've also got to work that muscle with your students of having a patient who doesn't want to have done to them once you're doing yeah. to them, right? Yeah, so it's all about creating rapport. Yeah. It is, and kind of explaining like, and you can hear me making comments to Megan like, oh my goodness, how tight is that muscle? And normally, patients say, oh yeah, that muscle is so tight, and then we work on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Obviously, my goal is not to create more pain, right. but usually if I'm pushing on a muscle that's really tight and really sore, after I let go, that muscle's gonna feel so much better because it's gonna be so much looser. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm trying to press her shoulders, really stretch her chest out, and she can probably feel that up along her chest and feel that right there. Now I do. Yes. <laughs> it's funny how I know all of their spots about you with only, yeah. with only doing this for about two minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess it's common for people who work at desks. They've got a lot of the same yes. issues. Right? Yeah. And that's kind of what we, what we portray to our students. Anytime we make any changes to muscle length, we then need to go in and strengthen it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we're not, I'm not going to mobilize a shoulder, right? I'm not going to do joint mobilizations to a shoulder, stretch out her range of motion, and then send her on her merry way. Okay, that's, that's, other, that's other professionals. Mm -hmm. okay? Right. What are we doing? Now. We're just waving to Charles. <laughs> hey, Charles. Now, if I were to mobilize her shoulder, work on her posture, now we're going to get into some strengthening exercises. Okay. okay? So I'm not going to do that to Megan. I think I've picked on Megan enough. I'm going to do that to uh, Craig here. So yeah. here we go. Let's have you go ahead and sit on that. Oh, we're doing something to me now. Yes. Okay. I'm suddenly very aware of my posture. I'm like, all right, yeah, now, right? I gotta, now I got. Now I got to sit up straight. <laughs> you got it. All right. See, that wasn't so bad. Now I got to fix the hair. <laughs> you doing something to me now, Dan? Yes. <laughs> oh, you got, you got headphone hair. Headphone hair. I probably got PT hair. You that? probably do have PT. Do I have PT a, hair? We should we should coin that. We should trademark. That. <laughs> All right. So I brought in what we have we have on the floor. Oh, it's it's a Bosu ball, so it's a three hundred and sixty degree kind of instability. Right? Hold on, I got to so turn on my slow motion. So if he falls, we get this in high def slow motion. <laughs> so let's Thank say, you for not putting me on the ball. Let's run it in slow motion. <laughs> so let's say Craig had a hip surgery. Craig had hip pain or even back pain. Um, and we've all we've, of the above. All of the above. <laughs> hey, all right, perfect. Uh, and we've gotten to the point where we need to start strengthening so that he can get back to playing flag football or indoor soccer or whatever Craig likes to do on the weekends. Okay, we have to get him back to the those muscles back to the position or the strength that he can go back to those activities and not hurt himself. Okay, so we might throw him on a Bosu ball. All right, Craig. So I'm gonna be right behind you. I want you to step on the side, step on the other side, and bounce. And then bounce. Okay. okay. All right. Ooh. But I'm getting on. I'm yeah, get on from the back. Yes. Okay. All right. So you can face the audience here. Okay. <laughs> so I got one there. Yep. There you go. Oh. oh. Yep. So keep them shoulder width apart. <laughs> I want you to bend your knees, stick your butt out, tighten your belly. 
Yeah, there we go. Touch right? your nose. <laughs> so Pat as, belly. It, Craig can kind of tell you what's, what he's feeling right now. He's probably feeling a lot of burning in yep. his thigh. He's probably feeling a lot of burning in his butt. Oh, he grabbed your butt. Yeah. <laughs> lots of peeling in my profession, Megan. Lots of peeling. Lots and lots of peeling. He's probably feeling some burning in his core. If he were to just stand up straight and go loosey-goosey on me, yep. Yep. automatic loose his balance, right? Yep. So go ahead and... Stick your butt up, bend your knees, tighten your back. Yeah, there we go. So he could do some squats on here. So if he would, he could squat and come back up. Oh my. Yeah. Ooh, look at that shake. Good, go back. Pull back down. Uh-huh, yep. Nope, not that high. There you go. He can take our body blade, grab it with two hands, in the frontal plane and shake it up and down. Now we've added some perturbations. I am so glad I wasn't on that yeah. thing. <laughs> Now he can tell you. So Notice blinded. how Craig isn't talking, everybody. <laughs> yeah. I'm concentrating on yes. all that He would tell you if he could. This is also actually my mustache. Yeah. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. You can do it unilaterally, so you can do one hand. Oh, yeah. Like this? Uh huh. But you just, just use one leg. Yeah, there you go. Good. Ooh, and Craig is I'm impressed. up a storm. Y'all oh, probably yeah. can't see it, but I'm feeling the radiating heat off yeah. of him. Yeah. Really? <laughs> well, yeah. also, I'm wearing more clothes than I need to because it was cold outside. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm going to get it a close up. I mean, you probably didn't know you were going to be doing this today. Very so. <laughs> nicely done. All right, so go over to the side. Good job, Craig. Step either front or back. Perfect. So Awesome. Gosh, nice. I'm impressed. So it's kind of, it's, it's kind yeah. of, <laughs> he's going to be cold tomorrow. Yeah, I can right? feel that. Yeah, so um, our profession is kind of twofold. It is addressing, hold on, let me sit down. You had the workout too. I know it. Um, it's kind of twofold. So we address pain, mm -hmm. we address dysfunction, and then we correct those, whether that's through soft tissue like I did with Megan, whether that's through corrective exercises with Craig where we were really stressing his entire musculoskeletal system. Um, and what Craig didn't know is that we were also stressing his vestibular system as well as his proprioceptive system. What's a vestibular system? Ooh, good question. Thank you. Hmm. So we have three. <laughs> that one thing where we put that thing that one time? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you've heard of your inner ear. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've had an inner ear infection. You have three what we call semi-tubules in that inner ear. And those tubes have liquid in them. Aligning those tubes, we have little hairs that will sense the movement of that fluid. And when you kind of tilt your head, right, those, that sensory organ tells your CNS, your central nervous system, where your head at is in space. When you get tipped upside down, those, your vestibular system or those three semi, semicircles tell your rest of your body where you at are in space. Hmm. Okay. So we are stressing that system. We are also stressing his – see, I told you all, I could go all day. I know. Yeah. Um, we are also stressing his proprioceptive system. Well, because he was his body or his his, uh, um, his central nervous system had to know where his feet were. What's my feet doing? What are my hips doing? What are my quads doing? What are my knees doing? So that whole time, your central nervous system, your cerebellum in the back, is all processing all these information. So especially on the BOSU ball, we were stressing three systems: vestibular, proprioceptive, as well as his visual, because his eyes are telling his brain where's my horizontal. Yep. He was probably concentrating either on Chelsea or something in the background because that's going to give his I would have been focusing on the system. glass table that I didn't go to face plant. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been mine. <laughs> yeah. So we are using all kinds of systems. We instruct our students what systems we're stressing, what systems we need to correct, how do we correct it, what's wrong, and how do we get people back to movement. So that's kind of that's one of the greatest things about, about the profession is we are restoring people's lives. And that's what it kind of comes down to, is restoring Craig's ability to participate in his recreation activities. Restoring Megan's ability to sit at her desk and do things without getting the numbness and tingling in her hands. This is awesome. You're right, Dan. You could do the whole hour. And we'll, I know, we'll, right? We'll yeah. have you come back and we'll do this Yeah, the whole I mean, time, I could right? really talk about this. I know you've got somewhere to be, so yes, I don't absolutely. want to hold you up. And maybe once you've got some of your students that have, been, that have enrolled in the program, we can bring one of them, and you can talk while they're doing the practical hand hands-on. We could do that. That'd be awesome. That'd be yeah, awesome. for sure. Well, right. Dan, thank you so much. Thank you You're so, so much very welcome. Thank you for yeah. allowing me again to come yeah. in and and don't and forget to support the PTA. Our, our um, yeah, yeah, and also support the PTA club. 
uh, Chipotle's. What Burrito. was the date again? Uh, November 21st from 4 to 8. Yeah. Yep. And if so, you have any questions, uh, just put them in the comments and we'll forward them on to Dan. Absolutely. Help you out. Absolutely. And then if you go to our website, like we talked about earlier, my uh, contact information is at the bottom of that as well. Fantastic. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Thank so you much, so much. Thank you all Enjoyed for letting it. me come in and bring my toys and yeah. have fun. Yeah, for sure. Awesome.